Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. This episode takes us to familiar territory. If you've watched our previous stories on Olga Moskalyova, Vitaly Nikolienko, and Alexei Ivanovsky, then you will know we are talking about the Russian Far East. We are returning to Kamchatka, to a beautiful place called Lake Kuroskoye. As you can see by our map, we are now near the center of five cases regarding attacks we've previously discussed. The Senkabetsu Bear attack on Hokkaido, Japan, the Kinshur Island attack, the Olga Moskalyova attack, and the Vitaly Nikolenko attack, and then the topic of today's episode. If you're picking up on a pattern here, you're not the only one. These islands are some of the most sparsely populated areas when it comes to humans, yet we've documented some of the most tragic, violent, and unfortunate bear attacks ever. After today's episode, you may agree with me that this area of the world is most likely the most dangerous in regard to deadly bear attacks. The location is beautiful Lake Kurilskoye. With its clear waters and cool temperatures, it receives very few visitors each year. Any visitors that may find their way there might be photographers, researchers, and possibly fishermen. Otherwise, you can count on solitude, peace, and bears. Lots of bears. Michio Hoshino is an extremely accomplished wildlife photographer, observer, and researcher in his mid-40s. He was born in Japan and moved to Alaska to photograph brown bears in the 70s. His photos, videos, and artwork have brought the farthest corners of the world into the canvas and lighting of galleries around the world. In 1996, he was hired to do photography on a documentary about brown bears in Kamchatka. The first few days of filming went great, but on day three, the photography crew lucked upon a very large male brown bear that did not mind the crew approaching within a few yards of him while he fished. The bear would simply ignore the crew, and they recorded some amazing footage of the giant Bruin as it gorged itself on salmon just a few meager yards away from their lenses. The next day, they returned to the same spot, and there he was again. He seemed to relish the spotlight and played and showed off for the crews. He was not aggressive or threatening in any way, even though the photographers would sometimes approach within five yards to film him eating. The crew continued this for a third day and decided to make the hike to the lake to watch the big bear fish as part of their regular trip to gather footage. The big bear seemed content as he pulled in huge salmon and effortlessly tore them apart right in front of the crew. Some of these fish weighed about half as much as the men watching. It was on the fourth day, during the morning hike up the trail, that the crew noticed large piles of scat close to their camp in the trail to the big bear's fishing hole. They continued their hike and noticed his tracks and scat were placed over their boot tracks in the trail from when they returned to camp the prior day. Well, this is bear country and we are hiking on a bear trail, so a certain amount of that can be expected. The photography crew went on about their filming trek for the day, but when they got to the Big Bear's fishing hole, he wasn't there. They were bummed, but they couldn't just return with a bunch of film of the same bear doing the same thing anyway. That would be boring. They finished up with a few shots of a sow and cubs that they watched for the afternoon and returned back to camp just before evening. As the men made it down the hill to the main trail back to camp, they noticed more bear scat. It was the big boar's tracks, and this time his tracks were in their boot tracks from their hike up this morning. That evening, the Russian guide asked Michio if he would please consider sleeping inside the cabin with the rest of the crew, as the presence of the bear tracks around camp indicated a potential for danger. Michio loved the sensation of being outside and sleeping in his tent under the stars, so he politely declined. After all, he had had over 20 years of filming and photography with bears and other wildlife this way, and wasn't feeling threatened by the presence of the bear. The guide deferred to the preferences of the experienced photographer, and they all retired to their beds for some rest and relaxation. After dinner and conversation, Michio made his way the short distance from the cabin back to his tent. He didn't have any food in his tent and nothing else tempting for bears like sweets or flavored drinks. He didn't pack a firearm and didn't see a need for bear spray while you're sleeping. He positioned his sleeping bag just beneath the window in the tent so he could stare out at the stars and feel the fresh air on his face while he slept. He curled up in his sleeping bag in his tent on the shore of Lake Kuril and allowed the lapping of the water on the shore to lull him to sleep. As Michio slept, around 4 a.m., the big bear crept up on him and sniffed his scent through the tent window. Upon smelling Michio, the bear pounced on the sleeping man, biting his shoulder and swatting him with his paws. 
The bear tore apart Michio's tent while wrenching the man from his sleeping bag. Michio yelled in pain and woke his sleeping teammates. The Russian guide and other campers ran outside and watched by flashlight as Michio disappeared into the woods, dragging behind the running bear. The rest of the crew could only look on as their associate and friend's life was taken before their very eyes. Authorities were notified and recovery crews were assembled and helicoptered into the site. Michio's mutilated and partially consumed body was recovered as well as his tissues from the bear's stomach. The bear was put down at the site. The attack was deemed a strictly predatory attack. In fact, the bear followed and stalked the crew members for several days, as evidence shows. The world lost not only an amazing photographer, videographer, and children's book author, but a father, son, and husband. He is survived by his wife, Naoko, and a son, Homa, both of Fairbanks, Alaska, USA.